Okay, so I did get that uh, little bug fixed. It took me most of the week to figure out, but I got help from one of my close friends. So uh, we were able to figure out a solution for uh, what to do and stuff like that. And to, together we were able to come up with a uh, system that would allow the energy to flow properly. So basically what was happening is the energy was actually going back in the direction that it was and it was kind of making it uh, not send it all the way through. Uh, for this, what I ended up doing was creating a flow system that basically uh, keeps track of the direction of the energy that's being flowed from a generator and this will require the generator to be updated as well as the cables and um, basically any future devices that we'll be covering um, in a little bit. So uh, next episode, what we'll be covering is basically the um, batteries and that will have a huge role in the whole system. So I'll be able to show you more in depth on how to set all that up. So like always, I do update the document for information. So there is a section on ForgeFlow, which is the system that I basically uh, introduced. There's some different uh, components that we'll have to cover today. So all these procedure blocks are set up. Some of them might not be up to date for the what they actually look like. I'll have to update this document um, because I had to update it last night and uh, from the cable section. So I will cover in game like in the M crater and show you what how how that all sets up. But uh, just keep in mind that all these blocks are basically set up for this system. So all this. Okay. So with that being said. Let's take a look at the generator. That will be probably the easiest thing to start with. So I'm in the uh, Forge Energy system, which is actually Forge Energy, Forge Energy slash Fluid system um, that I'm working on. And there is um, all the blocks that I would need to do the tutorial with, though I will be covering Fluid in the future. So I have to create that after I get all this stuff set up. So if we go to generators, solar panels, and then procedures, we can go to the update tick. And then the only thing that's really required in this part is the forge flow variable. You might notice that it's a lowercase f for a forge and then a capital F for flow. It needs to be that way uh, for the rest of the script to work. So um, you also might notice that we have a send position down here. So basically that is Y negative one because the generator for the solar panel has the cable connect on the bottom. So this is basically where the position of this forge flow variable needs to go is one block below the um, actual block that is currently running from the generator. I'm also setting this value to something like 100, uh, 1024. This will give it enough uh, distance. So it will be able to go through um, 124 different cables or devices in order to reach the destination. You can always add additional generators to a system to expand that distance as well. So the, the best way to see it is this is basically the starting point where the cables will kind of go down in direction from the number. So every time it goes to a new block, this value will decrease by one. So it'll be from the first cable next to the generator, the next block, uh, the next cable or device to that cable is going to be 1,023 and then 1,022, 1,021, and it'll just keep decreasing as it passes that variable on. Um, when it gets to zero, the energy will not pass through anymore. So you would need to extend it through another generator or something like that. You can adjust this number to whatever you want. The only thing that you really should pay attention to is making sure that you have a limiter uh, set up. So a limiter is, we'll get into that in just a second, but basically it's just testing if the block below supports energy. So if it can receive energy and that direction of that cable that connects to. So for example, the uh, this one, it's wanting to know if the block below has a cable facing up for uh, up connection. So we would make sure that our custom variable 
MBT variable is set up for that and we're testing for the same position as we're going to be setting the coordinates which is y negative 1 in this case. Um, outside of that you don't want to put it directly onto your um, energy script as you can see here. Um, this would basically only uh, tell the system to update um, when the uh, world is either raining, sunny, or thundering or a combination of anything in between and if it is day in that provided world which we don't want to do we still want the the flow to end up going through that's why we have it on the outside so basically all you need is to make sure that it's on server side and then that it has it can support energy below or whatever connection that you have on that side and then if it has that particular connection point other than that all your energy script should be below that so uh, that's the best way I can explain it. Um, moving on, uh, what we need to do is after we have that part set up, we need to go to our variables uh, and our variables tab on the left hand side here. You want to add a new variable and then you want to call it forge energy. So forge, whoop, don't know what I'm typing there, forge energy. Uh, nope, pardon me, not energy, flow. So it needs to be a capital F for flow and lowercase f for forge. And then you want to make sure that it is a number variable. And it's on the, uh, for the scope for map. Uh, this will allow you to create a timer, which I've already set up the template for. So we already have this set up. The value for this is zero, so it will automatically update uh, once it starts the, um, when the first take of the world. So the, basically what this will do is it will synchronize all the cables and all the pipes and uh, any versions of those. So you could have copper, tin, um, whatever you want for different materials or anything like that. And it would be linked up to this one timer. So when this will reset to zero, everything will reset and it will readjust the um, direction of the flow direction if that makes sense so basically if it's uh, a generator is removed then it will be able to update and go okay well that generator is not there anymore we can um, change the direction of that so that happens every 15 seconds or 300 ticks so if we go to our uh, next thing which is going to be the update tick once you have that variable in you can just simply import the template variables and everything will basically work. So you can import the um, procedure for the cables. This is probably one of the first things that you want to do when you set up the forge energy. Um, I should probably mention that now is you want to set up this variable exactly the way that it's set up. So everything else works, right? So if we go to the, where am I going? Where am I going? Um, global triggers. And then we can go into this one. This is where I've set up the, um, timer for the thing. I'm running it on server side. Uh, so basically it's not um, provided world client side. So basically this will only run on the server side, which is good because this procedure only runs on server side. As you can see down here, it says server side only. So uh, we want it to generate the uh, or run on a on world tick update. So we're using a global trigger we're scrolling all the way down to the bottom here and it's a uh, world tick update uh, reason for that is like I said yeah the cables and everything have to synchronize so when this turns zero what I want it to do is basically want it to completely wipe all the variables in that use this system and it needs to reset to zero so it can readjust the entire line of cables again uh, this is pretty much the only way, well, there was a couple ways that we could have gone about doing it, but uh, this was by far the easiest way for me to set up. So basically what happens is this is the time that it will take to reset. You can adjust this. It's probably best to leave it at 300 uh, just so other mods and stuff have the same uh, adjustment time and everything like that. But um, this is just the timer. So it will reset set the timer to a higher number again and then it will decrease every tick 
between that. So before it gets to zero, it will repeat that process. So it'll just kind of go subtract, 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 it gets to zero, and then it will reset. And then by then, all the cables will be already updated. And then it will basically go subtract, sub sub subtract, and then it'll do that whole process over again. So that's basically what you need. Uh, once you've done that, you can go into the uh, template, like make sure that you have the variable set up and you can go to M creator. I got that forge energy thing here. And then I got forge flow right in this here in procedures, forge flow. And then you want to get, oh, pardon me, um, global. You want to go global. And then there's the forge thing, the timer here. So you can basically just drop that in and it will automatically be all ready for you. All right, so let's take a look at the cables and we can kind of break down how those are set up. Um, so we need to go to cables, procedures, and the forge energy, and then the procedure here. So the energy system, uh, the only thing that's really changed that you need to worry about is making sure that you import this whole thing and update these variables here and your energy loss if you've adjusted it for energy loss. Um, basically in here, this is um, the reset script for the entire system. So it's getting that global variable that I created and we're testing if it is equal to zero. So basically if it's exactly zero, it's going to basically set that forge flow tag that we had before, uh, which has been passed through all the other blocks because the cables eventually send it to those locations so we can actually see this has been added to the the script so we've been testing if it's the forge flow is equal to or pardon me greater than zero so if it this block has forge flow greater than zero so if it's already been set and then we're going to test our conditions now you don't necessarily need it set up this way for passing it to a local variable it's just easier to manage for the cables and it takes less uh, script to do it this way, but I've set it up in a system where it's a little bit easier to use. So um, basically all I'm testing for is if the block that direction can receive energy, if the variable is set up, so in this case it's south, so we're getting this variable up here, and then if the direction of that block that is in the same direction that we're testing for, these two things, is less than our current block. So basically if it is the direction, I believe north is less than our flow direction, then what it's going to do is it's going to basically return this as true. So all these conditions have to be returned true in order for that to work. If we look at this one right here, what we can see is we're using that variable right here. So it's testing if it is all this and then we're going to make sure that it basically sets the variable for that direction. So the north of the block, and we're getting the forge flow of the current block minus one. So basically it decreases the value by one. And then it will do that until it reaches a direction that it, it can't go any further. So as long as that value is less than one or less than the current value of the, the the current block then it will continue to go down the line of the cables or the devices depending on how you set it up um, until it reaches a point where it can't go any further so that could be when another generator has already started pushing the other direction towards the middle or it could be until it reaches zero so basically if it reaches zero and there's no other number that it can do anymore then it's going to just not do that so that's basically how that part works. Uh, we can take a look at another example, how this is all set up. So I'm just gonna minimize all this because it's not really needed. We don't really need to see all that part. So that's the cable part. Um, make sure that you set up the forge flow global variable before you import this procedure. And the other thing that I should probably show is just the procedure blocks on how I set up the battery. So. We'll cover the battery in the next episode more in depth, but um, it would probably be good to show you how to set that up. So if we go to storage, battery, procedures, update tick,
You might notice that they're all on the update tick as well. So if we look at here, we have the limiter, which basically tests if it is, um, if the current block uh, can extract energy. It can be e receive as well, that doesn't matter. Um, as long as it's one of these conditions, if it can receive or extract, then this is important because then you can know if that block is forge energy based. And then this other one is for forge flow. So if we're testing if it's greater than zero, so the current block that is. And then down here, um, or up here, what we're doing is we're basically going ahead and we're testing if the block um, or the forge flow is set to zero and then we're resetting it. So this is outside of our limiter. That's really important because if it's inside, then it will only run when that timer resets. So we don't want that to happen. We want it to happen um, every tick uh, as long as these this, our conditions are met. So we probably would also want to run this on server side as well. Um, something I didn't actually set up accidentally. So um, that will just make sure that everything is uh, running specifically on server side and that it won't cause any lag for the players and stuff. Okay, so down below what we're doing is we're basically testing for the direction. Now, because this battery has different directions for north, east, south, west, I needed to test for the direction for that. And then I put the um, expansion script on. So uh, extend, which allows me to test if the block of that direction supports Forge Energy, can receive it. If the MBT, which is all assigned up here, and then we're testing for the direction of the flow and then we're finally subtracting that value so i've also put a, together all three of these things in the forge flow so let's take a look at this i've also done this for the bottom direction because i needed a bottom direction to actually work because the battery has a bottom connection as well down here is the energy script which is outside of these two ones and down below that we have um, the downwards energy script and then we have the model update part which is for here for the progress bar so that's basically that part i'll explain that more in detail in another video all right so let's go ahead and import and then we can go to forge flow and then there is the reset script so we're going to open that up and as you can see, this is the exact same thing as right up here. So this is the forge update script. It will basically reset the variable when that global timer is zero. So you want that at the top outside of any other conditions. Um, in this case, you'd probably even want it outside of this part. So it would um, be limited to the forge flow part. So you would have your server side we can fix that up right now so it'd be like this so it will run regardless if it has the energy or not so not and then world client side and then you would have something like this that way it would make sure that the battery has the energy uh, or doesn't require the energy it will update and then it will test for the limiter and then this part will take care of the energy part, which is what we need that part for. And then we have our script here, which is our limiter, basically. So this is going to extend and, or pardon me, this isn't the limiter, that's the limiter. So you can get the limiter by going to the limiter one. And then this is the exact same thing as you can see here. So basically testing if it can extract uh, the block and the forge flow is greater than zero and then down below is the expand strip now there's more different types of expand strip than the other ones you have each one for directions so we have north uh, down east south up and west so depending on what direction you want the uh, cable to connect to you would have to import one of these we'll just import north just as an example so it imports that MBT variable that you can set up. And then there is the direction for that uh, particular one. So if the block can receive energy at that direction and that the MBT for that block 
if it is facing the right direction. So this is north. So we need to test if the block on the other block that it's going to be sending to is facing towards our block, which is south, right? And then we need to test for the forge flow. And then again, this is just the limiter or the subtract and sub the subtract script to um, pass on to that variable and get it a lower number. So basically it just sends it. So we can actually see that in action in game. So I'm going to quickly go into game and just quickly set up an example so you guys can see how it works. All right, so we're in game. I already have this all set up. So if we take a look at these uh, particular blocks, so we can go slash k or slash data and get block and then we'll get the block over here and we should see that it has no energy storage so no forge energy is added to this particular one our forge flow is set to zero and we just have the necessary blocks for passing this variable over so in this case cable uh, direction is facing north so this is facing into this block here so if we look at this we can see this is the direction north so this one should be facing south and north as well so we can test that later on uh, over here is where i'm going to be putting the generator so basically we can test this side over here just make sure that there's no energy and as you can see there's no energy and there's no forge flow this is a brand new system nothing's been added to it yet so we can basically grab the solar panel put that on and then we'll go over here and we can test slash data get block it might take a couple seconds for it to update but it's already passed over the storage so as you can see it's uh, 64 and the forge flow is one 1013 so if we go over to this block right here which is right next to it we can see it's 1014 and this one will be 1015 1016 1017 1018 1019 1020 1021 22 23 24 so as you can see that would go right to that cable where we've basically passed it over from the generator so it goes from 124 to 113 at this point and on the opposite side this is going to be 113 as well so as we can see the other one was 113 and this one's also 113 because it's the same distance from the generator so basically it goes this way and it's the same distance but if we were to expand it like this way then it'll be another a digit so it'll be like 112 right so every time it goes through a device it will basically um increase that or decrease that number until it reaches zero and then it won't pass any energy through which is designed that way so it can function properly so hopefully that makes uh sense how it, uh, it works if you have any questions feel free to comment down below in the rate uh, rate the video and i'll do my best to um explain anything that you have questions for and next episode next week what we'll be doing is we'll be covering a battery system so we'll be setting that up in the tales of biomes and uh, making that all work so we have something like this so if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.